Just for joy There's no that thing with you Jumping under my fingertips Hope to spread happiness through to you Like mischievous forest elves Those notes I'm scared of the game Frightening to those Hi, I'm Krishna Welcome to Solitude Farm in um, Oroville, South India. We want to share with you our work in natural farming. Uh, natural farming is the creation, is the inspiration, the vision of Masanobu Fukuoka who wrote The One Straw Revolution. Natural farming is a gentle way of farming. It's a non-intrusive, minimum intervention way of farming that, re that reflects nature's own processes leaves fall, organic matter falls, seeds germinate, plants grow, decay and fall and there is not any machinery, there's no plowing, there's no chemical fertilizers, no pruning, it's all minimum intervention. So basically we want to show you how we're cultivating rice like this. This is, this is a, um, these are all rice fields here. These, all will, these fields will all flood in the season and um, this is a bean called black velvet bean. So basically there's three steps to the growing the rice. The first step is we'll throw seeds into the black velvet bean, then we'll cut the black velvet bean, then we'll spread the black velvet bean over the field and the rice will get trampled into the ground as we're doing all, the, as we're doing all that. The rice will come up through the decaying mass and that's the rice, uh, then the rice needs to be a little bit weeded, a little bit of thinning, but that's basically the system. So now we're going to actually show you step by step those, those, um, we'll show you what we're doing. So this is our rice, see from last year, and uh, basically, basically we put the rice into a bucket and we soak it overnight so this will get soaked now in water and then we'll sow it the next day into the field so step one firstly we sow the seeds in Tamil culture we call this corner the eastern corner the sunny's corner sunny means Saturn sunny karmai Saturday Saturn's corner so we always start sowing in this corner. So we just sow directly into the beans like this. This is Khaled and he's going to sow in the other direction just so we have quite a, a nice homogeneous germination. We also tend to over sow a little bit. We put a little bit more seed. approaching this. Fukuoka puts these seeds in clay pellets and he has a completely different system where he sows his winter grain and his rice in the same time. So far we, that's not working out for us because of irregular rains. If this germinates in the summer with a, far, with a crazy rain and then we don't have water to irrigate it for the next three months and it's 45 degrees then it's no point in having the seeds in pellets prior to the rainy season. So in this case there's such a dense ground cover here. If you look into this ground cover it's so dense. There aren't any, there, when the seed goes in here there, and this gets covered there's going to be no exposure for this rice seed to insects. That's another reason he puts it in clay balls. Sorry to not be so sequential with my information but it's to protect the seed from getting eaten by birds and insects. But when this seed goes in here and all this is cut and laid on top, nothing can find that. And as we're cutting all this beans, I'll show you that in a minute, the rice seed actually gets trampled into the ground. So this black velvet bean was planted in the end of April. Basically Khaled did that and he was sowing this, he sowed the black velvet bean and then he made these trenches on the black velvet bin and so it's about six months into the 
It's about six months now it's been uh, growing in the field. Now as we, what we do now is we have two people pulling it back and the other people go underneath and cut the, and cut the root like this. So as it's being pulled back, the other people just cut the roots and what happens is like this the seeds get trampled into the ground you see as we're as we're working the seeds are just getting into the ground like that they just get trampled in naturally automatically sometimes when you pull up the when you pull up one of the roots as well the soil comes up and covers the seeds as well so they're automatically getting buried so this is the step two. This is cutting the green manure. Yeah. And the ant. So you see there's a lot of life in this soil. Now it's full of life because it doesn't get ploughed. When you don't plough this soil you start to get a very beautiful soil structure. And the soil is not exposed to intense heat. This soil is full of microorganisms, millions of microorganisms, bacteria, molds, earthworms. As you can see, loads of earthworms in here, you just keep picking them up. So actually the whole need of doing, uh, the whole question of doing vermiculture and all of those sorts of things is completely irrelevant because just by returning organic matter back to this soil and not plowing it, we're, the life is coming into this soil on its own. So this is the quality of our soil. So there's a lot of advantages to doing this um, green manuring. It's an inherent, integral part of the natural farming. You can't do the natural farming without a green manure cover. Now there's various advantages of it. Within this system, of course, the main reason is it's a returning organic matter back to the soil. When this organic matter is, well, when it's alive and when it's dead, it's it's cooling the so soil. Uh, it's, it's like if you've got an umbrella under the hot sun, it's giving a cover to the soil. As it's, giving, as it's cooling the soil temperature, especially in the tropics, you're dropping the soil temperature by one or two degrees. And that gives the possibility of a lot more microorganism um, activity, a uh, lot more life, um, and it just basically helps the plants, you know. The roots of the black velvet bean like this, look, if you see here, these are all going through the soil. And you see, just I pulled up that one, I pulled up that one root. One, two, immediately I see three earthworms. Let's see if you dig in here, there's another one. There's another one. There's another one. I'm sure if we just keep digging we'll find more. Let's see. Anyway, the aim is not to collect all the earthworms, but it's just to show you that, again, the need to do vermiculture and all these other actions that man thinks is so clever and very great. Of course they're great and they're very useful in certain stages of regeneration of soil, but essentially they're unnecessary. Still it's man thinks that he can do something better than nature. But actually, all you have to do is return organic matter back to the soil and don't disturb the soil. Beautiful guy. Can you help me cut So as you can see, in this green manure, when you open it up, because it's so dense, because there's so much leaf litter dropping to the ground, there are no weeds growing in here. So the whole question of weeding a field and, and ploughing a field is completely superfluous because this green manure has suppressed any weeds. Play with us, frightening to those who never join the group. La 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 Feel the wheel in, see the earth beneath your feet. 
is our very unique way of of cutting the green onion. We just roll it up like a carpet. Again, you can see there's no weed under this green manure. Very weed free. Hey, hey, come play with me. Hey, hey, I make this for you. Hey, hey, so happy I'll be. down on the ground here. Again, the weeds are so minimal here. Of course there's going to be a few weeds coming up, but we're not talking about a clinical, hospital-like cleanliness of the field without any weeds. Basically, there shouldn't be too much competition for the rice, and there isn't, due to the green manuring. So as you can see, the three steps are done. First, we sowed the rice into the green manure. Then we cut the bean, then we spread the bean back. It was as simple as that. So this gentle way of farming, it, it, it allows life. You've seen how much insects and earthworms, and there's all the life you can't see. All of that life is the fertility. Fertility is not a list of, of uh, phosphorus and potassium and nitrogen in the back of a, in a table in a book. Phosphor uh, the, the, the fertility is the life. So by practicing this very gentle form of farming, we're nurturing life, we're nurturing the soil, and that's the benefit of natural farming. Don't hold anything back, this makes sense. 